So we left things off in a kind of sad told state me last time. Be people beyond our reach that we can't protect. You could just see how defeated they all are. I was so close to being able to save him. I needed to save him. Oh, one important thing I, I missed last time. Bakugo tried to tell Deku to stop, but it felt really different from the time where Deku saved him from the slime or whatever in the first episode. This actually felt like concern, which I thought was great in hindsight. All right, then let's go get him. We right, have to this leave is a great this conversation. to the professionals. It's not the right time for us to get involved. Idiots. Maybe, but all I know is that at camp, I couldn't do anything. And this I is heard my Kir friend was Kirishima's targeted, boy. and I just stood by. He loves Bakugo so much, he even brought formal clothes for him on the Two Heroes Island adventure. And that's a true friend right there, and that's real love. Helpless. So if I stand They're all by feeling a little bit helpless now, right now. How am I supposed to call myself a hero or, or a man? man? Yeah, that was interesting. He's still within your reach. We can this is so tempting for Deku, too. Go. Everyone's sweating profusely in this scene. From Ida to Midoriya. Interesting. I can see a lot of ways that could go. You're going to get Ida's been down that road. Make you another receiver. Track a bad guy and then try to save Bakugo all by yourselves? Yeah. They're really like going through with this. <laughs> Have the two of you lost your minds? <laughs> hey, calm down. That was a surprisingly little amount of hand movement from Ida. We can't let our emotions get the best of us. Right? Thank you, Shoto's hand. We should just leave this to All Might. He's so timid, turns out. Aoyama is correct. Though I'm part of the reason we failed. They're all taking this so, so personally. It doesn't matter how noble your intentions. Always the level-headed one. They're trying to find the bad guys. Knowing you're breaking the rules, then you're acting like villains, not heroes. Ooh, that's a great call from Sue. Very interesting. <laughs> she just left them speechless. I love it. <laughs> Damn, no one, just don't argue with Sue. You just don't argue with her. If we're doing this, it's tonight. Look, I know you've got some... Ida is so key in this, injuries, in this situation. So I don't know if you can go. But I wanted to invite you since you probably feel the worst. What does that even mean? <laughs> that feels like, like blame almost. From Ida to Midoriya is the title, right? Ida is a character who has lived experience of this very thing. All the characters have been through a lot, but Ida, I feel like, is one of the only ones who's actually gone into the dark side a little bit. You know, he has suffered not only from the actions of the villains, but from his own mistakes. And I think actually here, the law is maybe not the risky thing. I mean, that's what they're, they're framing it as, but the risky thing is their themselves, their image of themselves and giving in to sort of their impulses, which isn't to say it's not the right call. I think the important thing is like, who are you becoming? You know, you're going to become someone who reacts based on emotion and then justifies everything backwards where like, well, we, I had no choice or we had to do it, right? Or are you going to be someone who actually listens to what you think is the best choice in the moment, even if that's really emotionally difficult? And Ida was not able to do that. And I think the, the biggest pain of that is the feeling of loss of control or feeling like you're not who you thought you were. And that I think is the existential risk to the characters and Ida is so qualified to talk about that and it's something that I think a lot of the characters need to hear. We'll meet in front of the hospital after dark. But it's an interesting dilemma for Ida too because he understands the pain and so it's hard to talk someone out of that understanding their feelings, you know? You've done absurd damage to your body in the last few months. Yeah, are you Frankly, gonna make it to senior year? a whole new league of trauma. Yeah. Usually a person's body has limiters that keep it from using more than 80% of its power at any given point. But in a crisis situation, it's possible for those limiters to fall away. I've actually heard this about like mothers lifting cars off their children and things like that. If you sustain this type of injury, even just two or three more times, I don't think you're going to be able to move your arms anymore. Yikes, that would be a huge loss. Recovery girls fed up with you. But, <laughs> hey, I get the impression that's nothing new. They spend a lot of time together. Also, don't forget you did save Coda. Someone. Coda's life is forever changed. Stay positive. Good, but difficult advice. Dear Mr. Midoriya. Mr. Midoriya. I'm sorry I punched you in the balls. <laughs> you should be. Please, get better soon so I can thank you in person, okay? That was simple, but but sweet. Do you really have to go back to UA? Yeah, Mom's having a hard time. She's a victim, too. We would like to request your assistance, sir. I've received an emergency summons and must leave this place in your hands. Be strong as heavyweight denim without They're getting the crew together. Nice. Keep the fabric of society safe. <laughs> I love you. I love you, best genius. You're the man. Orca. He is an orca. Wow, this is a wild guess. Maybe it's because he looks like an orca. Grand Torino coming out of retirement. This is so... 
I'm really excited for this. It feels like a war is beginning. As they pointed out last episode in the in the table discussion at UA, the heroes have been sort of complacent and the villains woke them up. But it's going to be really exciting to see them actually wake up and start figuring this, this stuff out. I bet there's a lot of potential to be found in these heroes, even ones that have sort of been played up as just sort of auxiliary characters or maybe even comedic characters like Ass Girl. Look at my big ass, look at my big ass. You know, she might actually have something really cool if there's, a, you know, a good cause to connect to. You, know, you just woke up a lot of giants. You must know what we're planning. I do. Let me think about it. You gotta be really careful here. Really careful. I feel like she's gonna say no. Uh, Midoriya. Oh. Actually, I'm not sure where she'll fall, or Midoriya for that matter. But I feel like right now Deku is leaning towards going and Ida will have to talk him out of it. I think that- Hold on. <laughs> there he is. Why did it have to be you two of all people? The ones yeah. who stopped me when I acted recklessly. Well, that's what it makes it perfect, doesn't it? What are you talking about? Hear him out. He's earned it. And you raise in a bad position as it is. Anything we do will reflect on our school. But this is not really the, the full thing of it, though, I don't think. I know you don't like us breaking rules, but- Ida has a personal connection to it. Whoa, that was extra. <laughs> I'm frustrated, too. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm concerned, obviously. Right. I'm worried about all my classmates, not just Bakugo. What if your bodies end up irreparable just like his? Because I didn't step in. Oof, Ida is killing it. Have you not stopped to think about where I'm coming from? I thought about it, Ida. <laughs> we'll get him back without fighting. Yeah, we'll be stealthy. I'll stand behind my classmates. You can't be serious. Wow. You're the best. But this is sort of a naive plan. These villains are no joke. Because all I can think about is saving him. But Ida understands that. That's not the full point. I think Ida has a, a fuller picture. Ida also feels that way. I mean, he just said that. I don't think he actually is as concerned about the rules as he's letting on. He just knows the feeling of going down that path and it having consumed him. And also that saving Bakugo risks a lot of their lives as well, even though they seem kind of cavalier about it. I think this plan would make a lot more sense and I'd be more behind it if they were the only ones who could do the job. But we just saw that awesome hero assembling montage. And we got cat police officer on the case. I totally get Deku and I think I'm a lot like that. I mentioned previously that I don't really deal well with reasoning through this kind of emotion. The way I know how to get through it is by taking action. But there's a real danger to that as well, which is impulsivity. You know, a lot of the times, as painful as this is to swallow, the best course of action is to do nothing and wait, because time has a way of settling a lot of things naturally. It's neutral jing from Avatar, right? But truthfully, I think that's one of the hardest things to do, is to either take no action or admit one doesn't know something. You know, it's unsatisfying. But there's just so many nightmare scenarios of this that make things worse, and they also risk actually doing things that are wrong. The strong desire to do it does not justify it necessarily. I think there's actually a parallel here between this choice and what the doctor was just saying about Deku's body. You know, Deku is potentially one of humanity's greatest hopes, but at this rate, he's not even going to make it to graduation. There's something of a short-sightedness, which is hard to argue against. You know, like, that's why Ida is struggling a bit, because you sort of feel like you have to get out of someone's way when they're trying to do something that is good or that's following their heart, right? But that in excess is a danger. We'll never agree. So I'm going to come with you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he just gave right in. Now, let's talk strategy. I'm curious about Orca Man. His tongue is a tie. Will you join the League of Villains? Make him a pitch or something. But something far worse was about to begin. Oh no, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Something worse is gonna begin? <laughs> Did we just do that that bad stuff arc? What exactly is your justification for changing your mind and joining us? Hey, it's fine. You don't need to apologize. I mean, he wanted to on some level already. I'm your watchman. Exactly what we needed. I understand how each of you feels, so I'm compromised. Right. Don't forget that. Right. Understood. I mean, if you're going to do it, you may as well go go do it with eyes wide open. The others are so driven by frustration that they're blinded. But yeah, once speaking of eyes being the open or not. Once first hand and realize how difficult it will be, they should understand their plan is completely unrealistic. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. Once they're in, they're in. Yeah, even Uraraka ganged up on us and tried to get us to change our minds. I just don't I feel like some advice. of them will show up. Think about what Bakugo would want. Or maybe they'll tattle. It's interesting to see how they factioned a little bit. Speaking of the villains being more unified and the heroes being more separated. He's my friend. Meddling where you don't technically have to. It's the essence of being a hero. Oh no. He trusted that I'd make the most of his quirk. Is this the most of his quirk though? All right then. All right, if we're doing it, we're doing it. Let's do it. I just had to eat a moment. Just tell me where to go! Wait a second! From now on, we're going to need to be extremely careful. Yeah, so much for stealth. I have an idea, though it is a bit old school. Is that Don Quixote from Yakuza? Yo, fool! What you looking at? <laughs> the hell? This is me, incognito. <laughs> 
Now we're blending perfectly. She learned a lot from her internship, didn't she? I feel so ridiculous. He looks great. You talking to me? That's it. We're just a few scoundrels cruising for hot girls. <laughs> That's the spinoff I want to see. Couldn't you have used your cork for this to save money? If I started making everything, think of the impact on the economy. It would have a good impact on the economy. You'd have more stuff. Some flawed logic there. Let's return to a short clip from the UA High School press conference that just wrapped up. 24-7 UA High School coverage. Mr. Aizawa. I'm Vlad King and the principal. Wow, you know what's serious if Aizawa's on the news. A recent incident he, allowed is that Aizawa? To to oh my god, he looks so good. That's what he looks like? We take responsibility for any trauma caused by our negligence. Ugh. You well, gotta just eat that, huh? On TV. Yeah, that's what I said. UA students he looks have so had good. <laughs> four encounters with villains. They just want him to look bad. Yeah, yeah, they kind of love it, don't they? That's image. That's what the villains wanted. Weak in confidence. Create symbols of their own. They're gonna get those kids killed. Nice How easily shoot. people are swayed. Increase patrols? Give me a break. And they know nothing of the situation. The mood was changing. Yep. You could feel it in the air. Yep. The heroes are becoming the bad guys. Seems like they're not dealing with this very well at all. Got caught with their pants down, all of them. So much criticism. Also for me, if I'm a villain, I feel the momentum. And I'm gonna just go extra hard from now on. You know, like, if I'm competing, I crush it extra hard when I'm ahead. Because that's when you have the maximum amount of leverage while everyone else is scrambling. So they can really put the boot to the heroes next. While the heroes are like in this awkward position and trying to figure out what the hell happened. They're common collected. What is a hero? What is justice? Is this society truly fair? Soon, everyone will be asking. That's when we'll know we've won. And you like winning, don't you? Yeah, but he sets his own terms for winning. He's smart enough to know he can't take us all, right? Just blow up the bar. After one shot. All, UA students are so clever. Why is he so quiet? <laughs> I'm sure you're the same. That's more like it. Basically, what you're saying is you want to cause some trouble and you want me to join you. He looks good. I, I stand by that. If you just put a little chapstick on or something. No matter how much trouble he's in, he's always the winner. I like to win. <laughs> that will never change. Do you understand? You gotta respect it. That, I think, is one of the key takeaways of the episode where Bakugo and Deku faced All Might. It's not that... Bakugo wants to be the greatest or win in some arbitrary way. It's very specific to his role model. And in that sense, it seems like he's actually similar to Deku. They're both striving for that ideal of being the ultimate hero, but I guess where Midoriya wants to save people, Bakugo's focus is more about like being triumphant as that figure. But it's not about power as an isolated concept. Father. What? What just happened? Oh, wow, that was a short episode. What's the connection between the hand and his father? Bakugo may not even need rescuing. As powerful as he is, they definitely picked the wrong guy. Because Bakugo is going to be strengthened by the fact that they kidnapped him and are trying to push him in a particular direction. You can barely get the guy to chop carrots, you know what I mean? Like, he's not the one who's going to be forcibly recruited into the villain team. This is a very interesting episode, and honestly, I feel very conflicted about it. Because how do you just sit by when your friend's captured? I guess where I fall on it is that it's not necessarily a bad choice to go after Bakugo. It's not necessarily a bad choice to stay behind. I think the key for me is, like, where they are as people and what are they practicing? And what kind of precedent are they setting? And are they in control? Because it seems like a lot of them are not in control. And I think it's in those situations where things can go really wrong. And there's an existential risk as well beyond just the logistic risk because the loss of control is one of the most devastating things. You know, if you feel like you acted counter to your instincts, counter to your nature, and did something that you, at least on some level, thought was wrong, it kind of tears you up inside because it shakes your sense of self. You know, like, what else am I capable of? What happens next time? Am I going to be able to be in control next time? Am I really in control at all? You know, I thought I was a good person. I thought I knew myself, etc. You can slide really deeply into that and so I think those are really key moments you know like doing the the right thing in that situation and I say right thing not to mean like the best outcome thing but doing the thing that feels right you know that you feel connected to builds that track record for yourself with yourself whereas allowing yourself to slip into something like that and then rationalizing backwards from there to where it's what you have to do or have no choice to do weakens that relationship with yourself and you can slide real quick personally for me you know I've experienced a lot of things in life some bad things have happened to me but the things that cut the deepest are sort of when I do things that I kind of knew were wrong or I didn't feel really good about doing but there was some like strong drive that I couldn't I couldn't win against or I felt like I couldn't win against and so that for me is always like a real clear danger that I'm trying to avoid I don't want to be pulled into those situations anymore but it's so complicated too because I also believe 
believe in following your heart. The status quo exists for a good reason. It gives good structure, but the status quo can't be the whole thing. Instinct is really important as well. So I think maybe one way to soften it is like whatever the choice is, you try to be maximally honest about it first. Sometimes you know that a certain action, a certain choice bears incredible risk. And sometimes the instinct is to have just total blinders on to what that is. But I think that in some way there's a protective measure in like stopping and thinking, all right, these are the risks. Like this is actually what's at stake? Am I okay with that happening? Am I fully accepting the consequences of my actions? A lot of times I think that thought will be enough to sort of like halt the momentum. If not, then at least it was a choice that you made, which is better than like that loss of control, if that makes sense. You know, like do what you gotta do, but don't lie to yourself about why you're doing it. Don't lie to yourself about the risks. And that might even help you commit to it more fully and do it even better. So it's really fun stuff. I'm very excited to see where it goes because I can see it going in a number of different directions, although it seems pretty clear that they're gonna attack. It's not gonna be a stealth mission. It's possible and very exciting to think that all these paths might converge. But yeah, that's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next time when we finally get Bakugo's bar art.